Welcome to the Human Nature Channel. I'm your host, Alex Tamsula, and what am I doing here? Well, it happens to be actually Wednesday morning at my dad's ever surprising farm garage. In fact, I'm going to show you something. I got to lift the tripod and the camera and flip the monitor around so I can see what I'm doing. Uh, yes, there we have it. That is a still. That is a bootlegger's still. What can I say as I flip the monitor around and put my camera back to where it was? My dad's a trip. Oh, yeah, he really is. Okay, uh, I've got everything I need for this evening. I got my, got my scotch tape. I got a jar of rubber cement. I got... Uh, <laughs> I got a pointer with a magnet on the end of it. The reason is, this turned into a 16 page script and I've got all the pages leaning up against the microwave oven with a whetstone. That's where you sharpen knives. I got this long whetstone. I'm holding it in place. This is a real improv thing. And the magnet is to grab staples that are in the uh, sheets of paper, like one staple on the first page is on the left side, and the next staple on the second page is on the right side, and back and forth, back and forth. So I'm going to pull these pages forward as I read them. Uh, this could turn into a total disaster, but you'll still get to see it. Okay, a couple of things I'd like to address before we get started. Uh, the word, um, on the mirrored door of the medicine chest behind this camera, I got the word um scotch taped. And it was there last week. And when I went home last Wednesday and loaded the video into my computer and watched it, to my horror, I am saying the word um after every sentence. And I'm like, all right. Tell a little kid not to run with the scissors. And what does he do? He runs with the effing scissors. Okay, next bit of business. In my last video, I showed a diagram. So here we go. Video number 20, I believe. And I've corrected all of the things that were pointed out to me by the commenters. Thank you for this. I put north in the right place. I got west and east where they belong. Uh, I think one of the commenters said, I'm not even sure you got gate 7 in the right place. I give up. Okay. Let's see what else. In my last vid, I said, We Be John Cullen was video number 17. Actually, it's video 16. I catch my doofy mistakes after the fact, and then I slap myself in the forehead and correct them. I'm going to have to watch that. A couple of shout-outs to Eric Peters and Concerned Citizen and the great back and forth we had in the comments section on Sunday. I've been, over, I've been on YouTube for over a year and a half with my movie review channel, Movie That's So Groovy with Alex, and I hardly ever got any comments. Now, on the Human Nature channel, I'm finally getting the full social media experience on YouTube, and it's a lot of fun. Like Lawrence Welk used to say, Thank you, boys. Oh. Did you know that Willie Nelson was the guitar player for the Lawrence Welk Orchestra back in the day? A fun fact to know and tell. Now, the idea for this video came to me last Friday when I was thinking about all the people who make up the Las Vegas Shooting Truth community and how there are a lot of different scenarios put forth. I use the word scenario instead of theory since there are individuals, the ones on the outside of this community looking in who don't approve of what we're doing and they'll stick the word conspiracy before the word theory and use that as an insult. I'm sure we've all had some experience with that. And you know what happens when somebody calls me a conspiracy theorist? Talk to the ponytail. Uh, but if you are canvassing all the different scenarios people in the community get behind with all the various data points, you'll quickly notice there's a clear division. On the one side of the divide, you have the camp where Stephen Paddock did the shooting alone. He, oh golly, excuse me, 
He was a gambler whose mental state was deteriorating and he was becoming paranoid. He thought the casinos, the casinos were cheating him. He also had taken to buying long guns and formulated a plan to get revenge on the casinos. Excuse me, one second. On the other side of the divide, you have the people who believe Paddock couldn't have acted alone. Plus, we get all the various subgroups where people speculate Paddock had help, or was a patsy, or was uh, even dead before the shooting started. How do we make sense of all this? So, I was thinking about all the competing scenarios, and I wondered if there was a way to reconcile them, nest them into a bigger meta-scenario, so to speak, where we can attempt to reconcile the contradictions, make a cloud of everybody's data points, see where or if they converge, maybe like the three blind men touching the elephant and misinterpreting what their hands tell them, there's a bigger picture that eludes us. I started thinking about all the scenarios as if, as if they were islands in the ocean, but islands close enough so we could build bridges between them, where people and ideas could cross back and forth to tackle the Paddock paradox, which is no solid evidence that Paddock had accomplices in the Las Vegas shooting, yet everything he did looks like more than is possible for one person, especially a 64-year-old geezer like Stephen Paddock. So first, let's set sail for Jake Morphonius Island. Here it's asserted Stephen Paddock was a CIA gunrunner, and that Paddock had some really strange friends and wasn't quite the loner the mainstream media portrayed him to be. Next, we shall break the waves to Mike Turber Island, where we will hear that the Las Vegas shooting was done by Paddock alone because he wanted the aforementioned revenge against the casinos. Oh, by the way, FBI Island is just off the coast of Turber Island. It's really very small. Only three pages. But there is some overlap here because Mike Turber and the FBI both concluded that Stephen Paddock acted alone. Overlap is very important to my little project here. More on that later. So, between Morphonius Island and Turber Island, we have these two scenarios that seem to be at odds. Is there any way for these views to coexist? Operating under the assumption that these two investigators have at least some element of the truth on their side, as per the three blind men and an elephant who probably wondered what the hell was going on. Let's build a bridge between Morphonius Island and Turber Island and see what we come up with. But first, I should mention that in 1981, President Ronald Reagan signed Executive Order Number 12333, allowing for privatization of intelligence operations, otherwise known as contractors. Another fun fact to know and tell. Keeping this in mind, let's say Stephen Paddock was approached at some point by an international man of mystery. Turns out this international man of mystery knows a great deal about Stephen Paddock. And he's also good at establishing rapport. Knows enough about the ups and downs of video poker to create the impression to Paddock that he knows what he's talking about. Then he gets on the subject of buying and selling military-style rifles. Excuse me one second. Ah, Paddock says he buys guns as an investment. Now, Alex doesn't know this for sure and would love to find out one way or the other, but maybe none of the guns, save for the ones in the Las Vegas shooting, were ever fired. You only buy guns for one of two reasons, to shoot them or to sell them. If none of the guns had ever been fired, that way Paddock can resell them as new at full price. 
If those Second Amendment types have success in blue states pushing for stronger anti-gun legislation, if the families of Sandy Hook are successful in their lawsuit against Remington, bankrupts the country, uh, excuse me, company, and gets it shut down, guns will become scarcer and the prices will go up. Hey, I'm an accountant, says Stephen Paddock. Here's the plan. The CIA wants to shut down a group of Muslim gun runners operating out of Las Vegas. Our undercover operatives will send them your way, Steve, because after they've been told you are looking to sell your entire collection of brand new guns, they'd love to meet you. They'll have you travel to a hotel to make the gun buy, says the man of mystery. But at the last minute, they'll call and cancel saying they can't make it because it's not looking safe. They'll reschedule, give you another location to try again. And again, they'll call and say they can't make it. But they're only testing you, trying to figure out if you're for real. Eventually, they'll give you one more hotel to travel to, Mandalay Bay. Third time's the charm, or maybe the fourth. You think the casinos are cheating you, Steve? Well, we'll fix their little red wagons. We are leaving Mandalay Bay out of the loop. Because of their lack of security, this gun running shit happens in that hotel all the time. Hotel management knows all about it and they ignore it because they get kickbacks. This stings, Steve. We'll expose all this and give Mandalay a well-deserved black eye. And you'll be handsomely paid for your services. What do you say, Steve? Steve says, let's see what I'm going Sure. Okay. The International Man of Mystery says, great, there's only one more thing we're going to need. A cover story. And that brings us to Loomer Island. After my cruise ship capsized off the coast, I swam the shore. It was a mile. Now I'm slowly crawling out of the surf and pulling myself onto the sand. Give me a second to catch my breath. I just want to take this opportunity to say, even though I'm a big critic of Laura Loomer, I don't think she should be deplatformed from social media. I'm all for free speech, and I think she should still be, oh goodness, she should still be on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, where I can keep an eye on her. I'd love to see her face on billboards along the highway holding a glass of milk and wearing a white mustache. I'd love to see her as a balloon in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. You could put her on a postage stamp for all I care. Can we at least all agree that trespassing is not cool? Can I get a consensus here? Can we all agree that trespassing on the lawn of the home of Nancy Pelosi, Speaker of the House of the United States House of Representatives, is not cool that trespassing on the lawn of the home of California Governor Gavin Newsom while wearing a sombrero is not cool. Alright, Laura's fundraising letter. <sighs> At the very end, it says, P.S. On Sunday, I had to attend a court-mandated life skills course in California after my arrest on the California governor's lawn. I really appreciate all of the donors who stepped up and supported those travel costs. Thank you again for everything. And if you can donate to my lawsuit, please click here. I'm sure a lot of you know how I feel about Laura Loomer. Can you believe I actually get fundraising emails from her? I think I know why this happened. It's because I posted a comment in the comment section under one of her YouTube videos and I ended up on her email list. You know what? I hope her fingerprints are all over this. I hope she did this deliberately. Hey, Laura! 
my deal still stands. In fact, I'll up the ante. You say something about Plantation, Plantation, Squirrel Hill, and I'll cut you a check for... Oh, where the hell is it? Oh, there it is. 50 bucks. I got it right here. Alex of Squirrel Hill has a real problem with you, Laura. Do you hear me? Okay. That's enough Laura abuse. Ah, uh, I'm again. But remember, Laura hit Las Vegas with a ready-made agenda. Boo hiss Islam. Boo hiss Sharia law. Boo hiss ISIS. Boo hiss shish kebab. Boo hiss algebra. So, of course, she'd grab hold of any scrap of information that bolsters the notion that the Las Vegas shooting was an ISIS attack. Laura said... My sources told me that Stephen Paddock converted to Islam six months before the attack. Okay, that's interesting, especially since Islam prohibits gambling. Isn't Stephen Paddock on CCTV footage gambling the day before the massacre? You know, some Muslim he turned out to be. Laura said, my sources tell me that Stephen Paddock settled all his debts before the shooting, which is what someone preparing for jihad martyrdom does. I suppose that could be the act of a terrorist preparing for his big close-up, or it could be the act of someone getting ready to flee the country and has the attitude, nobody's going to call me a welcher. So, let's say we build a bridge from Loomer Island to Morphonius Island. And let's say we build another bridge from Loomer Island to Turber Island. As I said, according to Laura, Stephen Paddock supposedly converted to Islam. The Muslim gun buyers would be comfortable with that. There's your cover story, Steve. Overlap and contradictions are important to my scheme of finding a way to link all the scenarios together. Again, I'm not saying Paddock and the International Man of Mystery is what happened, but I'm trying to come up with a model of the data that explains as much as possible. I'm putting all of the data into a context. And even if everything I'm saying is fictional, truth is stranger than. Where we find contradictions is where we have more work to do. My favorite contradiction over everything that we've heard from all sources is Sheriff Joe Lombardo saying Stephen Paddock had an escape plan, even though Sheriff Joe deferred from going into any of the details. Then, when the FBI's three-page report came out, we're told Stephen Paddock didn't have an escape plan. Well, which is it? That's a big contradiction, if you ask me. Resolving contradictions like that is where all our hard work will pay off. But more importantly, overlaps are the sinew that holds the Las Vegas shooting truth community together. And what's the greatest piece of overlap there is for us? It's that the LVMPD's FIT report was a slipshod job that the report is full of errors or worse, and that the FBI's three-page report amounts to an insult. I said in a pinned comment, the JFK assassination had one man get shot, and we got a Warren Commission report that was 888 pages long, plus a published 26 volumes of supporting documents. Then there is the Las Vegas Route 91 Harvest Festival Massacre with 58 people killed, 422 wounded, and we get a three-page FBI report. Or, more contemporary example, the Mueller Report. 300 pages of nothing. What's wrong with this picture? We the people deserve an investigation into the Las Vegas Route 91 Harvest Festival Massacre that's better than this. That's what holds us together. That's it.
And the song is Paul Simon's Loves Me Like a Rock. Hmm. <laughs> When I was a little boy, when I was just a boy, and the devil called my name when I was just a boy, I say now who do who, who do you think you're fooling when I was just a boy, I'm a consecrated boy when I was just a boy, I sing her in a Sunday choir, oh my mama loves me, she loves me. She gets down on her knees and hug me. Oh, she loves me like a rock. She rocked me like the rock of ages and loved me. She loved me, loved me, loved me, loved me. When I was grown to be a man, grown to be a man, and the devil would call my name, grown to be a man. I say now, who do, who, who do you think you're fooling, grown to be a man? I'm a consummated man, grown to be a man. I can snatch a little purity. My mama loves me. She loves me. She gets down on her knees and hug me. Oh, she loves me like a rock. She rocked me like the rock of ages and loves me. She loved me, loved me, loved me, loved me. And if I was president, was the president the minute the Congress called my name, was the president. I say now, who do who? Who do you think you're fooling? Do you think you're fooling? Got the presidential seal, was the president. Up on the presidential podium. My mama loves me. She loves me. She gets down on her knees and hug me. Oh, she loves me like a rock. Ah, she rocked me like the rock of ages and loved me. She loved me, loved me, loved me, loved me, loves me like a rock. She loved me, loved me, loved me, loved me, loves me like the rock. She loved me, loved me, loved me, loved me, loves me like a rock. Loves me like a rock. Na 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 na. Loves me like the rock of ages. Loves me like a rock. Loves me like a rock. Woo! Loves me like the rock of ages. Love me like a rock. Loves me like a rock. Na 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 na. Loves me like the rock of ages. Loves me like a rock. Loves me like a rock. Woo! Loves me like the rock of ages. Loves me like a rock. Loves me like a rock. Loves me like the rock of ages. Loves me like a rock. 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 Oh, oh, that one felt good. I can't wait to hear the replay. <laughs> Later.